Hi, everyone, and welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovation from leaders in our industry. And it's PTC 2024. It's January. I'm talking to our friend Sean Farney, who is Vice President Data Center uh, Strategy at JLL. Always a pleasure. Great to be back here in JSA TV land and with my JSA friends and colleagues and everyone here at PTC at this rockin' conference 2024. Yeah, it is rocking. It, the energy here is incredible. There's okay. so much going on. It's the running and meeting and talking and collaborating and deal making that we all know and love. And it feels up leveled yes. this year with the excitement of all this incredible new tech and demand. It's insatiable. Yeah. And we're fortunate to have you joining us because uh, like you said, there's lots happening outside uh, these doors of this PTC hub <laughs> that we're currently in. But we're uh, especially excited because you, of course, are a returning author to Greener Data, Greener Data. The, you were also, uh, we were looking, you're uh, listed right here on the, the first volume that came out a couple years ago. We have the second volume coming out in April. Tell us about your chapter. Uh, uh, honored to be a returning author. Thank you so much. And you know, shout out to Jamie and the whole JSA crew for, for doing this wonderful thing that helps the industry. It's its very malevolent. Um, this ch Greener Data 2 chapter, this time around, I'm, I'm really excited about because it, it captures, uh, it takes a real estate concept, adaptive reuse, which has been around in the, in the field for a long time. Yeah. And it, it really goes in the detail of how adaptive reuse actually solves three major problems we're having today in the industry. And the first is sustainability. We all have sustainability pressures from the board level, right? Very, very important. The second is the rise of AI. In the last year or so, since the street got so interested in this new technology, we have take a, taken a radical new direction in the industry around cooling, power density, design, you know, uh, cabinet layouts. It, it's really, really amazing. Um, and, and we don't have too many answers for that. And then thirdly, we are, are really challenged to find land and power. It, it's a race. It's all about the power. It used to be yeah. ping, power, and pipe were the, the three things we looked at for data center sites. Now, particularly from the JLL perspective, we, we help a lot of folks with site selection. It's really all about power. So adaptive reuse, taking an existing building, yeah. reusing it, either with a modular, modular solution or future fitting it or retrofitting it, um, it saves all the investment and carbon impact of concrete and steel that you would otherwise have from building a new site. Um, it gives you um, small facilities that are pre pre-built and has existing power, a place to land AI. And um, these are in buildings that have already had planned power in, in sometimes urban areas where there is power capacity. So it solves uh, a lot more detail to it, but it solves some of the most pressing issues we have today. Uh, and we actually have a, a long history of adaptive reuse in the data center field. We, we yeah. forget this. Um, look at the carrier hotels, 350 Cermac. Uh, that was an old R. Donnelly, you know, printing yeah. press facility where they, they printed the Sears catalog and the yellow pages. Um, Ackerd, um, uh, 111 8th, uh, QTS Super um, in, in Atlanta. All these are adaptive reuse projects um, and we're good at this and we've kind of gotten away from it. We've gotten a little more disposable and that's not very sustainable. So adaptive reuse um, is, is worth taking a look at and we're going to expound on this quite a bit uh, this year at, yeah. at, at JLL. Um, and and I like to point out that in the, the U.S. alone, there's 5 billion square feet of commercial real estate. It's not all properly utilized or maybe a little underutilized now yeah. with the changes in how we work. So it's a great opportunity again to take this concept, this real estate concept and apply it to data centers. And we've been doing it for a long time. So yeah. really excited about this. And, and Sean, you know, we, I mean, we've uh, worked, you've, we've known you at JSA for many years now. Uh, you're an expert in this space, right? We've had you speak to us in many different ways on roundtables and you have, a, obviously we just heard you what you were just saying, but it, you have even more, um, to say on the, the idea of sustainability and why it matters to our industry. Why is it important to you? Um, I, you know, I take sustainability, I, I, um, I kind of have a more of a personal yeah. answer here. So we've been talking about sustainability for a long time in the industry. It's really, really hard. 81% um, of JLL top 50 customers have ESG goals from the board level, but only 19% of them have a, a publicly funded and planned resolution hmm. path. So yeah. this, this is really, really hard stuff. 
Um, and it's hard to do and it's hard to start. And, and the, the way I engage people and, and, and suggest they look at sustainability is, is really starting with a personal, you know, think globally, but act locally. Uh, and, and my claim to fame or my kind of where I put my stake in the ground on this one is I decided um, to have a, a net uh, carbon impact of, of zero heating my home. So I, I burned deadfall from my 30 acres of woods behind my house to heat my home. Um, hmm. and, and I wanted to try that out as yep. an exercise in personal sustainability to kind of put put my money where my mouth is. And, it, and it's hard. It's a lot of work getting a fire or a wood burning yeah. stove going in the morning to heat your home. Especially this time of year when it, yes, it's chilly outside. Wisconsin where yeah. there's a foot of snow on right. the ground yeah. and sub-zero yeah. temperatures. So I implore everyone to act locally and personally first to understand the challenges of sustainability and not just think it's a trend or something that's easy to do or uh, mm -hmm. you plug in an EV and there you're done that type of thing or, or you buy you know PPAs as a data center operator so I, I put a personal challenge out to everyone to do something in their own life to understand the impact of sustainability and what it actually means to do it and that it is extra work which yeah. informs how we work in the greater world and what we're doing in industry and how we we run facilities so on, on that note, I mean, I, I think that's a great call out to everyone to to take responsibility uh, for this. And, and that's some of the work that's that's being done by bringing the industry together through things like greener data, the I Mason's Climate Accord, all these initiatives are taking place. What's working from your perspective? What sorts of trends are you seeing in sustainability that uh, are changing the, the face of things? Uh, I, well, we're, we're really not so good at the industry at calling out how good we are at sustainability. So, right. you know, back in the uh, the PUE wars days, as I call it, so uh, 2007, 8, 9, 10, um, uh, I, I was at Microsoft. I was working under Christian Bellotti, who is the progenitor of, of, of PUE. Um, we gamified it. We put a number on it, made yep. it a metric, and drove it down. Um, did really good things. We drove down our uh, electricity consumption, and it had a, a pretty significant impact on the bottom line. Um, so we're really good at this type of stuff. And similarly, with sustainability these days, um, what we are really good at is, is gamifying. So measuring things like PUE and water usage. It, it, and now we're seeing uh, the embrace of innovative new cooling strategies to accommodate the density of AI, um, which is really pushing us into a whole new paradigm of, of technology, moving from uh, air yeah. to, to liquid. So. We're, we embrace innovation very, very well in the space, um, which sometimes is paradoxical because the best operators in our space don't like change, don't do uh, right. change because right. this leads to complexity and more entropy and so on and so forth. Right. Um, but I say what, what's working is our new embrace of innovation around technologies and power density and cooling brought on by the need for AI and, and um, really doing some different things and changing the way... Uh, we've been doing operational excellence in, in O&Ms for the last 20 years or so. Yeah. So there's positive change on the horizon. There is. Right? There's, there's all kinds of <laughs> positives. We all work really, really hard to do this stuff really, really well. Right. And we have the right people working on it, the right minds at play, and, and the right steps being taken. So Absolutely. This yeah. this conference is, is a clear demonstration of that. Yeah. Sean, thank you. I know it's, it's so busy. I'm sure you have 10 places to be in the, you know, in the next hour, but we always appreciate you taking the time to, to chat with us and, and our JSA audience. So thank you. Thank you, Barb and the whole JSA team and uh, JSA keep doing a bang up job and doing these wonderful things that help the whole industry. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in again to JSA TV. Happy networking.